me Ira Karmankar and I am Nurmay Behri. I am your team members from the team Hall Success. We are participating in FTC 2023-24 Center Stage. So today this is the first video of a series of videos in which we will be explaining some concepts which could come in handy for your journey in FTC. Today's video is vector calculations for mechanical wheels in which we will be explaining the basics of vectors, vector calculations and how that can help in uh, operating your mechanical tire. So I will hand it over to Nurmay to start. Thank you, Ira. Uh, so first we look at what is a mechanical drive. A mechanical drive is a drive with four mechanical wheels. Uh, you can see a picture of one mechanical wheel on the screen. Uh, these mechanical wheels have rollers uh, and these rollers are at a 45 degrees from the uh, normal. Right? The, when you put these in, when you have a mechanical drive, it allows you to move in any direction, horizontally, uh, forward, back, anywhere and even in diagonals. Uh, by manipulating the speeds of the wheels uh, to know which direction to, to go in which direction you need what speed you need vector calculations this is what we're going to learn today so before we move on to vectors one thing we need to learn are trigonometric ratios so as you can see there are three functions you can use these functions take an angle of the triangle as an input and give you the uh, ratio between two of the sides so sine gives us the ratio of the opposite side and the hypotenuse Cos gives you the uh, ratio between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, while tan gives you the ratio between the opposite side and the adjacent side. It's important to note that this only works with 90 degree triangles. Uh, so then we can move on to scalars and vectors. Scalars are quantities which don't have a direction. For example, time or mass, right? Uh, so it doesn't make sense if you have three kilos in that direction, right? Uh, so the good thing about scalars is you can just add them up. If I have a 3 uh, kilo weight in one hand and 2 kilos in the other, I have a total weight of 5 kilos. But vectors are harder. Vectors are quantities such as force, uh, acceleration, velocity, right? And here it matters in which direction you are moving them. For example, if I move my hand in this direction and I move my hand in this direction, the total movement was like this, right? Therefore it matters where it is. So you can't directly just add up the number. So we'll learn how to add these up uh, in this video. So before uh, we move on to the actual calculations, what the one thing you need to know that each vector has a head and a tail. The head of the vector is the part with the arrow uh, which shows where the direction is, while the tail of the vector is the starting point which is denoted by a dot. Uh, vectors can be moved anywhere through space because it doesn't matter whether uh, I'm, I was pushed from here or from here, the only thing that matters is I was pushed this much in that direction. So I'll hand it over to Ida for the vector calculations now. So now that we've seen about the basics of vectors and what is a vector, we can move on to components of a vector and vector solution. So let's say that I have a vector A B in this direction. So this is A and this is B. The first thing we need to do whenever we start vector calculations is to draw up our x and y axis. So now starting from the tail of the vector. This is the x-axis and this would be the y-axis. Now, components of a vector. What is components? Components is basically parts of whatever you're doing. Right? So, it's the same thing. So, now, components of a vector means that if you walk, if you are at point A and you walked till point B, you walk a certain distance in both the x and y-axis, right? So, those are the components of a vector. Now to find out the components, what we need to do is draw perpendiculars from the tail of the vector to the x and y axis. So now drawing the perpendicular to the x axis, this would be the x component of, of our vector AB. So let's name it xAB. And similarly, drawing the perpendicular from B to the y axis, this would be our y component of the vector. So let's name this yAB. Now this is what vector resolution is, what it did just now was it resolved the vector AB into its x and y components. This is vector resolution and the x component of AB and the y component of AB are known as the components of a vector. Each and every vector can be um, like resolved into its x and y components because no matter where a vector is, how much magnitude it has, what direction it is in, it will always have some part of it in the x and y axis because x and y axis can't just not be there. So each and every vector can be resolved into its x and y components. Now that we've seen vector components and vector resolution, we can 
now who want to enter addition. So as per my said before, adding scalars is pretty easy, right? You just add the magnitude. But for vectors, you need to add both the magnitude and the direction. So let's look at how to do that. Now let's say that you have a vector a b here again, and you have another vector b c. So first thing you need to do is drop the x and y axis. So this is our x axis, and this is our y axis. Now let's start by resolving the vectors a b and b c. So this drawing a perpendicular would be x a b. And this would be y a. Doing the same thing for b c. This is the perpendicular, and we have x b c here, and we have y b c here. Now we have got our two vectors and both of their components. Now to find out what would the resultant vector of these two vectors be, that is, to find out what the addition of these two vectors is. You can join point A to point A uh, to point C, and we can calculate this. So this is the vector AC, right? The vector AC is the resultant of the vectors A, B, and B, C. That means is the addition of the vectors A, B, and B, C. Now, if you draw the components of AC, what you'll find is that this is X AC, and extending it here, this is Y AC. Looking at this, what you'll we'll observe is that the components of the vector AC actually adds up to the components of the vector AB and BC. That is, XAB plus XBC gives you XAC, and YAB plus YBC gives you YAC. So, whenever you want to add vectors, you can add it by dissolving them into their components. You can add the X components and the Y components separately, and by adding that, you get the X and Y components. The resultant vector that means you get the component of the vector which is the addition of all the vectors we have added. Now that we have looked at vector addition, we can move on to how we actually use vectors in mechanical. So for mechanical, there are two orientations. There is an x orientation and the o orientation. So let's look at what those actually are first. Let's say these are our four mechanical wheels. Now you know that Nirmal said before that there are rollers on the mechanon wheels, right? So X orientation means that the rollers of the mechanon wheels would be in an X format. So the rollers for let's name these wheels number one, two, three, and four. So the rollers for wheels number one and three would be parallel. They would be like this. And the rollers for numbers two and four would be parallel. So they would be like this. You can see that the rollers are in an X shape, right? And in the O, all it means is the rollers are in an O shape. So again, number two. Rollers of it would be like this. The rollers of number one and three would be parallel, and two and four would be parallel. So if you join this, it kind of looks like an O. So today we'll be looking at the X orientation and how we can use vectors in that. So Let's get to this. Of our x orientation, a mechanon wheel's rollers are at, are at an angle of 45 degrees from the vertical. So if we take this to be our vertical, the vector of this particular wheel would be like this, which has an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal. So now, the writing of our vectors for wheels number one, two, three, and four. For wheel number one, the vector would be like this. For wheel number 2, it will be like this. And for 3 and 4, it will be like this. So now you see that the vectors of an X orientation mechanical drive are in an O orientation. It goes the other way around as well. For a mechanical drive in an O orientation, the vectors are in an X form. So this, this is the vector diagram for X orientation. Now, all of these vectors make the same angle of 45 degree with the normal. Now, for wheels number 1 and 3, you see that the vectors are same in magnitude, assuming you set the power to be same, and in the same direction as well. So, if we call both of these magnitudes D1, and same thing for uh, motors 2 and 4 as well, they are going in the same direction to the same magnitude, 
so we can call them D2. Now, as Brahma said before, we can translate vectors anywhere into space, but the angle needs to remain same. So, with this, we can actually translate the vectors of wheels number 1 and 3 to merge together. And now, since we have translated them together, the magnitude will become double because we have virtually added them. So, now we can see, say that the vector heading in this direction would be d1 plus d1, which is 2d2. And doing the 2d1, I'm sorry. Now, doing the same thing for wheels number 2 and 4, we add those two vectors together. So, the new magnitude would be 2d2. Now, you can say that the vector going in this direction, the magnitude is 2d2. Again, drawing up our x and y axis in this, this would be our positive x axis. And this would be our positive y axis. This angle is 45 and this angle also is 45. Now let's resolve these two vectors 2d1 and 2d2 in the x and y components. So for 2d1, the x component would be 2d1 cos of the angle it's making with the normal. In this case, the x component of 2d1 would be 2d1 cos of 45, which would be 2d1 by root. Now the y component of 2d1 would be 2d1 into the sign of the angle it's making with the horizontal. So the y component of 2d1 would be 2d1 sine 45. This is also equal to 2d1 by root 2 because sine 45 is equal to cos 45 is equal to 1 by root 2. So the x component and the y component would be same. Doing the same thing for the vector 2d2, I will write this directly. So the x component of 2d2 would be 2d2 cos 45, right? So it would be 2d2 by root 2. And the y component of 2d2 would be 2d2 sin 45, which is 2d2 by root 2. Now one thing you'll observe is that the x component of 2d1 is actually positive, right? It's along the positive x-axis. But the x component of 2d2 is facing the negative x-axis. So while finding out the effective x component, we need to subtract those two x components. We can't add them because they are going in separate directions. So we need to subtract. So figuring out the effective x component, let's call this x effective, is equal to, this would be 2d1 by root 2 minus 2d2 by root 2. To find out the y effective, the y component of 2d1 is positive while the y component of 2d2 is also positive. So this means we can add them together because they are going in the same direction. So the effective y component will be 2d1 by root 2 plus 2d2 by root 2. So this is how we can use vectors in the metronome drive. Now that we have actually calculated what are the effective x and y components. You can manipulate these components to go in whichever way you want, be it forward, back, left or right, or even diagonal. So now let's take a look at how we can do that. So how can we move? Now I'll take the example of four directions, four basic directions, forward, backward, left and right. So now again drawing up our X orientation mechanical type. These are the rollers and these are the vectors. So if you want to go forward, all your vectors must be facing in the same direction. So now the right up you already have your looks pretty good for a, a forward path. Because if you think the y components of these vectors are all facing forward. Now you might question that what about the x components? They will also contribute to some movement, right? But, so wheel number 1, 2, 3 and 4. For wheel number 1, this is the y component. And this is the x component. So y and x. Now for wheel number 2, this is y and this is x. Same goes for wheel number 3 and 4. Now if you look at it, the y components of all the four wheels are adding up and they are in the same direction which is forward. But this x component is positive while this is negative. And this is positive while this is negative. So that means the x components are actually cancelling out each other. So there is no movement in the horizontal direction. You won't be able to move in the x axis. That's why with this orientation of vectors, that is if you set the powers of all four motors to positive, you will be able to move in the forward direction. Now
Now doing the same thing for the backward direction, the only thing that will change is that the y components of all the four hyperboles will be facing in the back direction. That means they will be facing the negative y-axis, but the x components will still cancel out each other. So that's not an issue. Now for left and right, let's take an example of right. So you want to move right. That means the, your metronome wheels, all four of your vectors should be facing in the right direction. So for wheel number one, that doesn't look too much of an issue. It's already facing the right direction. For wheel number three as well, it's already in the right direction. Or for wheels number two and four, in the position they are right now, the vectors are facing the left direction. So we don't want that. Since we want it in the right direction, the vectors for wheels number two and four will be something like this. Where they will make an angle of 45 degree in the position. This is your orientation to go in the right direction. So you can set your powers to wheels number 1 and 3 to positive and 2 and 4 to negative and you will go in the right direction. The exact same for left, all you need to do is drop the vectors again. Numbering the wheels again 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now for wheels number 2 and 4 it looks good, it's going left which is what we want. For wheels number 1 and 3, since it's going right, we need to change the vector direction so that it will go left. So now the vectors for wheels number 1 and 3 would look like this. And this makes an angle of 45 with the horizontal. So now, if you set the powers to wheels number 1 and 3 negative and for 2 and 4 positive, you move in the left direction. Now this is how you can move in cardinal direction, that means forward, backward, left and right. We can also manipulate these vectors in any way you want so that you can move in any direction. You can move diagonally, you can move at an angle of 30 degrees, angle of 60 degrees, whatever you want. So now that we have introduced the moving in cardinal directions, we hope that you can also um, use this to manipulate your vectors in a way that you can move in any direction. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching and we hope that this helped you in your FTC journey and that um, you have some understanding of vector calculations and how you can use them in your mechanism drive. Uh, please like, share and comment this uh, comment on this video. Uh, it will really help our team. Uh, thank you so much for watching.